In 1957, in the Norman River of Queensland, Australia, a shot was fired at a large saltwater crocodile. This was a big croc, but when the hunters approached the animal, it became apparent this was a modern day monster. After measuring the beast, it was revealed to be possibly the largest crocodile ever recorded. This is the story of Chris the Savannah King. The story begins with the woman this crocodile is named after, Christina or Chris Palowski. She was a Polish immigrant that moved to Australia in the late 1940s but would become one of the most well-respected crocodile hunters in Australia. One shot was her nickname as she was known for having precise accuracy when shooting crocodiles. Christina and her husband Ron would get heavily involved in the crocodile hunting industry selling the skins of the crocs they shot. However, it would be an unforgettable encounter in 1957 that would give them fame. In 1957, Christina shot a saltwater crocodile in the Norman River of Queensland, Australia. As Christina and Ron approached the crocodile, it became obvious that this was no normal croc. This was truly something seen from the Mesozoic. Ron measured the crocodile in the riverbank and the crocodile measured 28 feet in length making it one of, if not the largest crocodile ever to be recorded. As Christina and Ron tried to retrieve the crocodile, it became obvious this would be an impossible task. Pictures were taken of the crocodile and the carcass was left in the riverbank, never to be seen again. The crocodile would gain a legendary status and would be named Chris the Savannah King. A statue was even built to honor the massive reptile. Chris is considered to be the largest crocodile ever recorded, but the fact of the matter is, it's not. In fact, there are a few issues with the story of Chris the crocodile. The first fact is that there is nothing recorded to look back on. All we have is the word of these respected hunters. Also, this photo here is not Chris. This photo that's been floating around online claiming to be Chris was actually taken in 1914, not 1957. A clearer photo also shows how forced perspective was used to make the croc appear bigger. So the crocodile shown here is most likely not even 20 feet. In addition, the supposed photos taken of Chris were lost in the Brisbane floods of 1974. So there is no existing evidence to look back on to verify this croc. Another aspect that's suspicious is that, as far as I'm aware, no attempt was made to cut off the head of the animal, a common prize for croc hunters. However, there is one factor that should be brought up which gives some validity to the claims of Christina and Ron. This factor comes from this man trusting their story. The man pictured here is Graham Webb, and if you don't know who he is, he's considered one of the many grandfathers of modern crocodilian science. A good chunk of what we know about these animals right now comes from the research Graham Webb did starting in the late 20th century. He was quoted saying, I spent three days talking with Ron, and everything else he told me about crocodiles turned out to be very precise indeed. I can't imagine him fabricating something like this. I actually contacted Graham Webb for verification of this quote as I was writing a book that looked at the story of this crocodile, and he told me that both Christina and Ron were accurate observers of crocodiles and did not believe they'd make something like this up. He also told me how Ron always described the eyes of the crocodile as huge, like an apple. If true, the head of this crocodile must have been massive, like a modern day Dinosuchus. While the story of Chris cannot be verified and therefore can't be considered the world's largest crocodile, it is indeed an interesting story if true. Only time will tell if we'll ever get to see another modern day dinosaur like Chris. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tails, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy. In 1987, reports of a Nile crocodile killing people from Lake Tanganyika in the Ruzizi River in Burundi began to emerge. However, this was no ordinary crocodile. It was 20 feet in length, over a ton in mass, and 100 years old. Gunfire couldn't even stop this beast. This one crocodile became responsible for 300 deaths. This is the story of Gustave the Killer Crocodile. Reports of Gustave started as early as 1987, with constant attacks from what people said was one Nile crocodile. This Nile crocodile was said to be large and instantly recognizable. He was said to have a technique of splashing water at fishermen with his tail, making them fall off the canoes or draft boats they were standing on to make a meal of them. He is said to be bulletproof too, with some soldiers even saying he will eat the bullets fired at him. Supposedly, he migrates in and out of Lake Tanganyika, and when he moves away from the villages he hunts, the killings would stop. This makes more people believe this was the crocodile causing the deaths. By 1998, a French naturalist by the name of Patrice Fay was called to deal with this problem crocodile. Patrice was determined to kill him, but had a change of heart after seeing him. Quote, 
The first time I see him, I shoot at him. I shoot again. I didn't kill him. I keep hunting him. And then one day I get a really good look at him. I see this magnificent prehistoric creature, the last of the really big crocodiles. I put the rifle down. I cannot kill him. I must save him. For the next two years I follow him. I study him. Oh, it was fantastic. Just me and him before the journalist arrived. I give him the name Gustav. Patrice's fascination became obsession and was dedicated to finding out everything he could about this crocodile. Patrice determined Gustav had quite a large range, extending from Lake Tanganyika some 20 miles up the Ruzizi River into a roadless area inside Ruzizi National Park. The reason for his migrations was to mate with females, but attacks occurred during his journeys. Patrice says Gustav eats a lot of fish and cows, but there is one claim of Gustav killing and eating an entire hippo. However, it seems to be human flesh Gustav has a taste for. Patrice thinks Gustav ate many of the dead bodies thrown in the river and lake during the wars in Burundi, and this made him interested in humans as a prey item. The 300 number supposedly comes from a calculation Patrice made saying, quote, if he had been killing people for 20 years at this rate, he would have already eaten more than 300 people. With 300 deaths tied to this crocodile, a large effort was made to remove the problem. A documentary crew even came to Burundi to film an attempt to remove Gustav in 2004. The documentary was called Capturing the Killer Croc, and this is where Gustav's worldwide fame started. This was also the first time people from across the world could see Gustav. Gustav, based on the footage, is definitely a large Nile crocodile. He can be identified by the many bullet wounds on him, along with a scar on his shoulder blade and other scars on the head. Patrice teamed up with crocodile experts Allison Leslie and Mark Ganswana to capture Gustav in a large trap. Bait was used, which even included a live goat at one point, but there was no luck. The trap even flooded one night, and the goat was missing when they checked on it the next day. Gustav was considered too clever based on Patrice's thinking. 2004 would be a terrible year as Gustav killed 17 people in just the span of 30 days. What Patrice wants to do now is shoot a tranquilizer into Gustav, put a radio collar on him, and release him back into the water. This would allow Patrice to track him and warn people if Gustav is coming. With Gustav still on the loose, this killer crocodile remains a threat to all in the country of Burundi. Or is he? Let's now take a more critical look at this whole story. The first thing that's easy to address is the claim of Gustav being the largest Nile crocodile ever. He is not. While there is no doubt he is a large Nile crocodile, there is no confirmed measurement to say he's even over 20 feet. Also, if we're going with unconfirmed reports too, there are many reports of longer Nile crocodiles, such as this 25-footer from 1903. Along the same line is his age. At the time of the documentary from 2004, people claimed Gustav was 100 years old. However, the fact he had so many large and healthy teeth debunked this. A very old crocodile would have little to no teeth left at this point. Also, just because he is a big crocodile does not necessarily mean he is a very old one. Contrary to popular belief, crocodiles do not have indeterminate growth when it comes to their length. They will reach a maximum size at some point in their lives and their growth will stop. Many times, a large crocodile is one that grew a lot when it was young. This is possible when the crocodile lives in a warm environment, has plenty of food, little competition, and favorable genetics. Taking all this into account, Gustav seemed to be around 60 years old at the time of this footage. Secondly, the 300 number seems to have been a major exaggeration. Patrice, when asked about the 300 number, stated, quote, This is not true. I have records. I have investigated every case for 11 years, and Gustav has only killed 60 people, maybe even less. End quote. It seems the 300 number was something Patrice threw out at the time and no longer agrees with it. I also contacted Brandon Sidlow of Croc Attack, which is the worldwide crocodilian attack database, and he stated the documentary crew interviewed many individuals about Gustav's attacks, and many stories led to dead ends. He told me, quote, it turned out that many people had heard a film crew was in town, so suddenly everyone knew someone who had been attacked. The other issue as well is that even if 300 deaths did occur, they most likely involved different crocodiles. Brandon stated that many photos of Gustav online appeared to be of different crocodiles, not the same individual. Brandon also told me the story of something similar with a 16-foot saltwater crocodile that was killed in the Batong Lupar River of Sarawak after reportedly killing many people over the course of a few decades. The crocodile was confirmed to have killed one person, which was the person who was killed before the croc was killed, but it remains unknown how many of the previous attacks this crocodile was responsible for. 
Brandon says given the fact fatal attacks persist in Batanglu Par to this day, quote, I would say he likely was not responsible for all of the attacks and perhaps not even most. I also want to state why a crocodile becomes a man-eater in the first place. While it's possible Gustav did eat dead bodies when he was younger, this is not the reason he started attacking people if he did. Now crocodiles are definitely more interested in humans as a prey item, especially compared to the Shire American alligator. But the reason for a croc to hunt down people is based more on experience. If a crocodile sees a human, attacks it, and eats it, the crocodile will make the association with humans that we are an easy prey item. This would be the reason Gustav would focus on humans, not because he gained a taste for human flesh. Based on the information presented by Patrice and Brandon, I personally believe that Gustav did kill some people, but it was nowhere near the 300 number. The 60 number even seems high to me. I think after a few people properly confirmed him to have killed some people, he was the go-to crocodile everyone pointed to for attacks. So where is Gustav now? Well, no one really knows. Michael Garlock in his book Killer Gators and Crocs from 2006 claimed Gustav was finally captured, stating, quote, Gustav became a victim of his own appetite and was finally captured in a well-baited trap. However, this seems to not be the case as in 2009, it was reported Gustav was still on the loose with photographic evidence. However, I can't really tell if this is actually Gustav or not, but I bet it is. The last rumored sighting of this crocodile alive was in 2015 with Gustav being seen by some villagers eating an animal. However, Africa Travel Magazine reported in 2019 that Gustav was finally killed. One Redditor even claimed that he was killed in captivity. At first, I found any reports of Gustav's death unlikely due to the fact that Patrice would have been in the know of his death and given a statement. But I think that's no longer the case. Unfortunately, Patrice Fay was accused of some really egregious things in 2011 and was charged. The whereabouts of Patrice are up in the air. He's either in prison in Burundi, back in France, or living in Togo. I'm not going to talk about the situation involving Patrice, but it's safe to say he's not in the know about Gustav. No matter how we look at the story of this crocodile, we're drawn to the story because it's a classic tale of man versus beast. He is an example of a modern day dinosaur and how nature can triumph over humanity. God only knows if this crocodile truly was the stuff of nightmares. On January 2nd, 1890, Edward Avery McElhenney was out mallard hunting in Vermilion Bay, Louisiana. While retrieving some mallards he shot, he saw in front of him what he thought was a large log. Upon further inspection, he discovered it was an American alligator of enormous size, and it laid motionless in the cold water. He thought the alligator was unable to get back into his winter den and would have died from being exposed to the cold. McElhenney shot the alligator in the head and when he lifted the head of the beast out of the water, he was convinced that this was the largest alligator he'd ever seen. He also thought the alligator was old and noted its teeth were worn down almost to the jawbone. The next morning, McElhenney and his hunting companions tied some rope around the dead alligator's neck and tried to pull the alligator out of the water. However, the alligator's great weight prevented the men from dragging the alligator far. They quit their efforts, and McElhenney proceeded to take the barrel of his gun off and measure the alligator with it. The barrel was 30 inches long, and McElhenney marked each measurement with a knife on the alligator's back. McElhenney measured the alligator three times, and they each gave the same measurement. This alligator was 19 feet 2 inches long, making it the largest alligator ever measured. Or is it? The first thing we have to acknowledge is that there's no physical or photographic evidence of this alligator. It seems strange that no attempt was made to remove the head of the animal. All we have to look back on is the word of McElhenney. Which brings us to the next question. Can we trust his word? The answer is, maybe. While Edward Avery McElhenney may be known for his family's hot sauce company, he was surprisingly well known as an educated naturalist, especially on American alligators. He actually wrote a well-respected book titled The Alligator's Life History in 1935 and showed he was very observant when it came to American alligators. Kelby Uchley, in his book American Alligator, Ancient Predator in the Modern World, stated McElhenney was, quote, likely the most knowledgeable alligator expert in the country at one time. However, McElhenney could have been lying or exaggerating about this alligator. You see, McElhenney wasn't always truthful. One prime example being he claimed he was the reason for Nutria to be introduced to Louisiana. The McElhenney Company historian has even stated, quote, he was well known on the island for his gift for spinning yarns. I think he saw himself as an entertainer when relating his personal history. 
he took liberties in a good-natured way. When taking this all into account, it's hard to really determine if this really is the largest alligator ever recorded, but you can decide whether this monster gator existed or not. To learn more about the animals you just saw, buy my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tails, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.